Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Happy Thursday. So this is the last trading day of the month. And we would like to tell you what happened in the past month of July and what we think will happen or what we should watch out for in the month of August. So let's start. So our sequence is always so we will summarize what happened in the month of July and then what to watch out for in August and then we'll mention our stock picks. So of course, after this, I'll mention also or at least explain a bit our two new uh Taylor's Playbook that was just released um, this week. Okay, so summary for July 2020. Okay, so for the month of um, July, so the PSA went down by 279 points, or that's around 4.5% to end at 5,920.45 earlier. Year to date, the PSI has dropped by around 1,800 points, or 24%. So let's just talk about this month. What supported the market? You know, we could have been down by 10%. We reached, as, uh, I think, I believe as low as um, 5.8 level. So at, a, at some part of this month, there was um, several announcements that there were positive results in the early trials in the experimental COVID-19 vaccine of the likes of Biotech, Moderna, and Pfizer. And we also saw improving global macro data at the start of the month. Like in the first week of July, the market was briefly up, mainly because of improving global macro data, like uh, improving manufacturing data in the, in, the, in the Philippines, in US, Europe. And in terms of US, right, uh, there was already really, uh, a good jobs data. So that supported the global markets. So what dragged the market, right? So we're down by 4.5% for the month of July. Why? So here we go. So uh, we saw Malacanang commenting anew on the possibility of reverting the NCR, or at least some parts of the, the country, into a stricter quarantine following the recent acceleration in confirmed COVID-19 cases. Of course, there were also reports that many hospitals were reaching critical utilization levels. So that spooked the market, of course. No, we, we Should Malacanang impose a stricter quarantine that will hurt the economy, right? As hurt con compared to what's already been hurting as we speak. There's also regulatory risk. We saw that. We saw a bit of a negative sentiment um, when what has been done with ABS. Of course, so... In terms of the sauna last Monday, there was not really much reaction as of as as of the moment. But nevertheless, that should cap gains, right? And and another, there was a bit of a U.S.-China tension, right? So so the U.S.-China tension slowly coming back, but not um significant like yet. But keep in mind that U.S.-China tension is always a market mover should it escalate. So something to watch out for besides the COVID issue right now. So in terms of, um, this is actually a report of ours. We released this, um, I believe, sometime last week. So we just like to explain in our report, based on our own findings, we, of course, we source DOH and also other sources, but this is what we compiled. So what's new? There was higher testing capacity and more accredited laboratories. So... In terms of national testing capacity, it's now at 50,300 per day. And in terms of, this is good to note, guys, that the positive test rate is still relatively fat. What does this mean? This is the data point we want to highlight is the daily positive test rate, which is the percent of tested individuals yield positive that yield positive results, right? While we see a clear uptrend in the number of individuals test per day, the positive test rate remains flat, with around 7% individuals testing positive in June. So that is, this may be one reason why there's an acceleration in daily reported cases. Of course, I don't, uh, we don't um, count out that there's really this surge of cases because of the lower quarantine, the less strict quarantine measures. Of course, I believe there was one DOH post, I, I saw it in Viber, right, when they attributed it and they said that it, this may be the cause of um after it was it's after the quarantine measure became gcq and ncr so besides higher testing capacity we're seeing also on that side and in terms of testing data 
we're a bit comparable now compared to our neighbors. Of course, the Philippines was able to test around 0.83% of the population as of July 11. So when you take a look at other countries like the likes of Indonesia, only at 0.23%, Myanmar, 0.17%, Thailand, 086 So we're there. In terms of this is another um something that has been occupying the news lately is the bed capacity, right? So based on what we um saw on a national level, over fifty percent of beds and seventy percent of ventilators allotted for, for COVID nineteen patients remain unoccupied, right? Um, we we're in terms of our channel checks, what we are seeing is mostly on the manpower. I guess that's mostly or that's the problem. If there is a, a a problem on the hospital um segment, right? So it's more on manpower. But some facilities are at critical utilization levels. We saw the St. Luke's hospitals, right? So reporting that they cannot accommodate COVID nineteen patients anymore. So in terms of the national levels, more on the on the state on the um, rural area, right? So there's capacity there. But at the end of the day, it's the NCR which has more cases. So that's something we should watch out for. So, of course, in terms of recovery rates, we're seeing improving recovery rates. So that's something we should also watch out for. We are hoping one day there are some consistent um, data where we see more recoveries in a day than new cases. So something we should watch out for. So let's go back to the market. So in terms of technical analysis, we've been watching the 5946 level for a couple of months now. And after two months of consolidation, the PSA finally broke below. Its support level of 5946. It ended the market ended earlier at 5928. So we're now below that 5946 level. In terms of the moving average, we're now below the 50 day. But keep in mind that the 100 day is still strong in holding. So that's something we should watch out for. Um, if it breaks moving forward, because if it breaks moving forward, there's likely further downside. So in terms of our trading plan, of course, this is uh, this is a risky. If if you're taking into consideration technical analysis in your investment, I think this is more of where you can integrate it, right? But if you're a fundamental guy, long term guy, that's another story, right? But if you're a technical analysis guy and you want to integrate it into your investment decision, this is our trading plan, right? So we suggest lightning in position if it stays below five nine four six early next week, right? We we can see the five nine four six being retested above, being retested below. So we we only recommend buying back if it's the, if the market breaks and stay above five nine four six with the MACD turning positive. If you take a look at the MACD right now; it's um, below zero in the signal line. So that's there's bearish momentum. So I want to mention, keep in mind, if for those who watched or at least um, observed the uh, we, we watched the monthly wrap up last month, watch it on YouTube. Right. We mentioned bearish divergences on these stocks. SM, now it broke down. Right, That's why it's very important to watch. That's why I, I've, been in, I've been putting bearish divergences here to keep us um, updated on what may happen on the price level. So this is what happened in the SM. It broke down at support level. Ayala Corporation, which has been holding up for quite some time, now already broke down on its support level. Ayala Land also. Right, so we're also seeing other breakdowns in big stocks, the likes of BDO, so DMCI, a significant um, breakdown there, and of course SEC, right? So despite recovering a bit, it's still at oversold levels. So this these were the resilient ones, right? I'm um I'm gonna also show you the resilient ones. So we we are seeing FGen as one of the um trending upwards within the index. And you can see here, it's actually retesting its resistance level there at around 27 pesos. So if it breaks 27 pesos, you can see um, upside from there, of course, a huge upside is seen once it breaks above its recent high of 28. So something to watch out for right there. So this is one stock to observe at if you really want to, if you are a guy, um, or that is a momentum trader, and you want to trade the index, FGEN is the one for you. And we also have PLDT, right? So we have PLDT, uh, one of the one of the more resilient names. 
in terms of its resistance levels around um one four, right? So I, I actually just want to go back a bit to the stocks that broke down, right? So it's, it's this is one example BDO, right? So if you're if you're really keen on entering, for example, BDO, and you observe if you look at the RSI level, most of the time, most of the time it bounces once it reaches, um oversold or near oversold level, you can integrate that to your investment decision. So I, I must say, okay, it just broke down. I'm going to buy if it reached oversold level and keep my cut loss at recent lows. So that's a good risk to reward trade, right? That's a good mindset if you integrate that. So that's one example. So I, I've been mentioning breakdowns here, but there's also opportunity here when you take a look at it, right? So there, that's how, that's one way to look at it. If you're really a long-term guy, you want to really buy at cheap levels as it is right now, but you really want to integrate technical analysis into your decision making. That's one way to look at it. Okay. So what do we watch out for in August 2020? So this has been dubbed as the ghost month. I must say that ghosts are the least scary thing to watch in the month of August. So what is what should we watch out for in the month of August? It's the data, right? So if we are to be scared of something, it's the data that will come out. But once there's scary, or well, once there's something scary, or once there's like, for lack of better phrase, blood on the streets, there's opportunity underlying, right? So what do we watch out for at the first place? So there should be this announcement of quarantine measures, right? I believe it should be announced sometime in the next couple of days right so I, I i emphasize here especially in ncr because that's where the market usually reacts given that most economic activity is in ncr right so for example if there is an mecq of if the if the iatf or the president raises the quarantine measure to mecq that is a risk to the market but in terms of news flow we're seeing metro manila mayor saying that they they want to maintain it at gcq so that should keep the market at bay right so it's very important for our own health and for the market to watch the announcement of the quarantine measures of course we should always keep watch of the number of covid 19 cases in the philippines specifically in ncr and visayas so we're seeing accelerating cases we saw the government saying if it goes above 85,000, they might consider it more to be a more to raise it to MECQ. But again, at the end of the day, um, it's within the at the end of the day, the IATF or the president will decide on it. So, but let's keep watch, right? If there's an acceleration, if there's a deceleration, if recovery goes past new cases, that's the thing we should watch out for. COVID-19 cases in other parts of the world, we're seeing accelerating cases, at least for the most part of July in U.S. and Europe. In Florida, there is a news that it may already have been peaked, but let's see. That's why it's a good thing to watch out for that still moving forward. There's also this U.S.-China situation, U.S. really blaming China on the, on the COVID-19 pandemic. There's also China not buying that much agricultural goods as as agreed on in the phase one trade deal. So that's something to um, keep watch on. Of course, I'm seeing a lot of things to keep watch on. And don't worry, that's the purpose of our daily reports, of our other research reports for you to be guided on. Of course, there's a lot of news flow out there. And it's very important to filter that. And one way to filter it is by basically looking at our reports. So another is, the corporate earnings we've seen um few corporate earnings results um released in the past couple of weeks and there will be bulk especially next week next week is where bulk of the earnings will come out especially next week and the week after that next week's the bulk but there's also a lot in the week after that so there you're gonna see like the likes of sm uh, ICT, PLDT, Globe, um, those kinds of earnings, even Ayala Land next week, right? So lots of earnings next week. So keep watch and just look at our daily reports, right? 
So we will not only provide you with the summary, but sometimes we'll provide you a comment on is it above, below, or in line with consensus estimate. So that's actually one thing I would like to discuss, right? Um, the, the expectation is all earnings will be lower, right? Almost all earnings, not all. Almost all earnings will be lower compared to last year. That's the expectation right now. And I must say that's already been priced in by the market. But what's not priced in is, um, is it, um, is it worse than expected? How do we measure what's expected? So actually, one way fund managers measure that is by analyst expectations. Because us analysts, we're the ones talking to the management, looking at what's happening in the sectors. That's why it's very important to look at our reports. Because should we mention if a certain earnings is below expectation, that's the time the market will really react on it. Because for example, for example, Meralco last week, it reported lower earnings year in year. But that's it's in line with expectations. And we didn't see Meralco drop significantly, right? So, so that's something we should watch out uh, watch out for and please take note in your investment decision. That's that's actually the role now of brokerages, brokerage reports to know if a certain earnings is in line above or below consensus estimates, right? So that's one way to look at it, especially in index names. So there's also lots of economic data. So also next week, right? Next week is like a blockbuster week, bulk of earnings and lots of um, economic data. We have inflation on, I believe that on August 5th, we also have GDP on August 6th, right? So that's um, lots of things to watch out for next week and we will guide you all throughout the way. There's also Central Bank Monetary Board meeting by the BSP on August 20. On the US, next week is also there will be jobs report. And on the latter part of the month, there will be durable good orders and GDP. Manufacturing data also next week, right? So very um, interesting week, very data-driven week, right? So all the more, it's very important to look at brokerage reports. So I'd like to state the facts, right? It's it's ghost month. I would just like to state a bit of a fact uh, on some statistics on the ghost month. So this year's ghost month, of course, not, ghost month is not necessarily the whole month of August. This is based on the lunar calendar. So every year, it's not the same days in the month where you have the, the Chinese definition of ghost month. So this year's ghost month, it will run from August 19 to September 16, 2020. I believe the festival is around September 2, if I'm not mistaken. So just a bit of a data. In the ghost month since 1987, the PSI went down 18 times out of the past 33 years. So that's 54.5% of the time. But it's been echoed um, from time to time, mainly because the ghost month registers the lowest return in the index compared to the other months. And that's that's a fact, right? That's why I think the market um, is very wary of that because every time when it does go down, it really goes down. But when it um, but at the end of the day, 5.4 out of 10 times, it that's the time it only goes down. But 4.6 4 times out of the 10, it the market actually goes up. And the fact here is mostly because this is a Chinese um, belief that they don't really want to purchase or big purchase in the ghost month. And this is where, given that, this is where actually fund managers take a vacation. That's the, that's the scientific way of looking at it, right? So that's why one thing to really expect in the ghost month is lack of volume because of the facts I've mentioned, like, um, lack of big purchases, lack of big investment, and fund managers taking a vacation. I don't know if that's the case um, this month because you can't really take a vacation, but maybe um, lack of trading activity because of lack of big investment. So that's something to watch out for. Or at least that's something to expect. And that's the fact in uh, the ghost month. Um, but keep in mind, again, when there's blood on the street, when there's market going down there's opportunity and this is where opportunity lies from the months from october to december 
the market historically rally. So let's just say, statistics-wise, picking up stocks when it goes down at low volume is a good time to accumulate, especially if you're a long-term investor. So that's that's the positive way of looking at the ghost month, right? So don't, let's not be afraid of the ghost, right? When there's blood on the streets, there's opportunity. So that's that's one way to look at it, right? Okay, so let's move on. Let's move forward with our stock picks. Of course, if you've been observing this for the past few months, not much has changed, right? But I will tell you later that actually all of our stock picks have somewhat outperformed compared to the PSEI, right? In terms of equal weighted. And I will show you that later. But let's just discuss the stock picks and let's review along the way why those are our stock picks. <clears throat> but before that, I will mention to you the risk in our top sector, which is consumer. Right. There might still be inventory problems, mainly because of, of course, when we're seeing supply chain normalization because of the lower uh, or the less strict quarantine measures. But that's still a risk for some companies, especially some can, can cannot still travel um, a long way given the localized lockdowns. Another risk is the imposition of excise taxes on junk food, ranging from 10 to 20%. So if you take a look at the asterisk below, that's the definition of junk food according to what has been trying, been the government trying to pass. Of course, no, we saw the Netflix Lazada thing, digital tax being passed by the House Ways and Means Committee, right? Because they need um, revenues given the lack of tax collection, um, given the pandemic, right? And while I cannot early, we cannot count this out as early. If should if the government will pass this excise tax, this it's still a risk moving forward. So, burger fries, fried chicken at the top of our head that could affect Jollibee, Max's Pizza, right? Deep fried salt is tax that could affect URC. Should it be imposed? So something to watch out for. But a stock pick, since it's not yet imposed, now we, we are still positive on URC. Our actual, uh, this is an updated target price of ours. I will tell you which target price have we updated. URC is one. URC is 178 pesos current target price over the next 12 months. We are seeing a trend in more snacking at home within the next 12 months. Higher expenditure on package branded package and branded foods, um, especially from working from home individuals like myself, um, even homeschooled children, right? So there's also supply chain normalization. So we are seeing restocking of inventories. We are seeing URC not lowering in their prices because they have this pricing power, given that there's demand and there's a shift from stacking at home. So that's why we like URC. RHI, we also updated this target price. We actually increased our target price over the next 12 months to so 92 pesos. Um, besides URC, we see RHI well positioned to leverage on stay-at-home trends. Um, we see recovery, for example, more spending at home, health and wellness. Right, remaining favorable for RHI supermarket, hardware, drug store, and specialty store segments, which historically has contributed to 80% of RHI's annual turnover in the last five years. Keep in mind that these segments account for also 80% of the revenues as of first quarter of the year. Right, so keep in mind, should there be an MECQ or ECQ at the worst case, RHI, as you can say, can be your safe haven play. So that's why we like RHI. And RHI remains flooded with cash, um, has a higher dividend payout compared to peers, and has, with that being said, it has this war chest to cushion the business against risk of potential sto store closures moving forward. Of course, Pure Gold, we remain positive with Pure Gold. Um, just to reiterate why we like Pure Gold, it's mainly because Pure Gold can operate uh, all of its stores, right? Besides not usually Pure Gold is not located in a mall. So it has its own lot, it has its own rules, whether it likes to open or not, because it is a supermarket. It it can open, right? So keep in mind that Pure Gold also owns SNR. So why we like Pure Gold is Pure Gold, the Pure Gold brand caters to the low to mid-income market, while the SNR caters to the middle to high income. So it, it captures the whole consumption recovery story in the Philippines. You, we're seeing a bit of consumption recovery given the less quantity measures. People have um, already adjusted a bit to the scenario, like working from home, right? So there. 
So of course, no, we all we also like banks. The next couple of sectors we will mention, I must say, is is good for long term investors to prepare for once the dust settles, or once, for example, if you have a vaccine, for example, if there's um no decelerating cases or at least no more increase in cases here in the Philippines, these stocks will prepare you for that to pick up at, at current levels at um and to take advantage of the valuation. So first of which um, is the banking sector. But there's a risk, and we saw that risk in some earnings releases of the banks in the past week. We saw lower loan growth, lower fee income from credit cards, and higher non-performing loans. Higher provisions, especially, right? So of course, our topic is BDO. So BDO, I've shown you before, or earlier, it broke down on a price uh, perspective. But keep in mind, despite falling interest rate environment, we believe that the robust credit expansion will spearhead the growth in the core lending business in the next 12 months. So in the latter part of this year and the next year. So of course, for BDO, we have not yet um, revised our target price. So there's room for downward division for that. But it's not that much significant downward division should be revised. So bottom line, it's still a buy call for us. For DBS, um, they also haven't revised yet downwards their target price, but it's still a buy call for Metrobank. So Metrobank is one of the for the long for the long time a really cheap banking stock, and for the past three years, given for example the the problem with the trade issue, right, the regulatory risk, um, not regulatory risk like in, involving the market as a whole that dampened investor sentiment, right? So that actually affected. That actually affected um, the other names, even if there's no regulatory risk within the stock itself. So the Metrobank was affected by the, the investor sentiment, but nevertheless, it still re remains cheap, and especially for new investors, something uh, you should consider investing at for the next five to ten years, right? So again, the second cyclical name that we or sector that we like is the property. For of course, property is really having having a hard time when you take a look at the headlines because of the weaving of rental fees there's also lower residential bookings and delayed project launches right they've lowered their capital spending on their expa or their expansion spending this year so that's a risk for growth right but keep in mind that the, the sectors we are actually recommending are post pandemic proof because Keep in mind that the stocks we are recommending are not that exposed to POGOs. And once once the dust settles, once the pandemic is done, there's still a regulatory risk on POGOs. And these names, I must say, are the safer ones in the property sector. So the first one is RLC. So RLC, we lowered this target price to 27 pesos, but we still like RLC. If you take a look at the net income, in the next coming weeks, it it should outperform compared to peers, mainly because, um, mainly because it's uh, it has this strong revenue contribution from its office leasing segment, and also there's this revenue potential from its Chengdu project in China. Keep in mind that China is actually the first country in terms of economy to recover, in terms of GDP. Actually, in the second quarter is already positive. So it will recognize revenue from its Chengdu project in China. And in terms of valuation, it remains cheap. It's being sold down. Actually, RLC is one example that broke down. So something for us to take into consideration if we are a long-term investor indeed. So on the second point, like I've said, RLC is less exposed to the Pogo sector. SM Prime Holdings also, um, one catalyst of this post-pandemic is the the passive reclamation project, right? So that's why we like SM Prime Holdings. Um, besides that, it has we, we do believe it's priced in more risk compared to its current um value. So there. As for Ayala Land, so of course uh, a lot of people may know already that Ayala Land uh, will list its REIT company. I believe it's on August 13, and that will actually benefit Ayala Land itself because it will free up capital and provide better financial flexibility, which will be used to fuel its expansion.
So there. Also, we like SM. While it broke down, when you take a look at the share price performance here today, it's still one of the outperformers. And why? Because SM, number one, it's not in the eyes of the regulatory um, bodies, right? It also has this strong balance sheet. And its business are the leading ones. It will really prepare you post-pandemic, right? The, the BDO, SM Prime Holdings, it's shopping mall. It's the it's a leading business. It will, and we do see it will that will that trend will continue, uh, moving forward. Especially and that and you will see the numbers especially, post pandemic that there's they will still be the leader. So there. So of course I would just like to mention there is two other sectors. For example, in the restaurant business, we don't we're not positive on the restaurants the likes of Jollibee. Mainly because of the weak demand due to new normal, limited dining operations. Of course, so the government has been trying to increase dining capacity, but we do believe um, despite higher capacity, we, at the end of the day, um, dine-in sales will be lower, significantly lower. We don't also like, for example, gaming here. Um, I believe it's still a far shot where whether casinos will open in the near term, given that um it's still a strict um quarantine measures out there but of course uh, there's a chance uh, the government has actually tried to open drive-in cinemas gym by august 1 to gcq area so let's see but at the end of the day it's still a risk because gaming um is not a necessity it's a luxury and we believe that's not the trend given the pandemic so there. So these are the actually this this is the performance of our stock pick. So while it's performing lower year to date, it's still outperforming the PSEI. So if we complement that to what we've said, it should continue to outperform, especially when the market recovers. So there. So again, now um, for those who have a shorter investment period, this is the trader's playbook. Um, of course, for Trader's Playbook, we created this to take into consideration um, the market volatility. So how do we earn besides earning from the PSEI or the index names? That's why we created this Trader's Playbook report because um, it will tell you what happened, what's our view, our recommendation. We also tell you when to enter, when to exit, and when to cut your losses, right? And on the second page, you will see a technical analysis and peer table. So keep in mind, both fundamental and technical analysis in one report. So for example, we recommended Dito here as early as um, April, right? This is one new report of ours, nickel, right? We're seeing um, higher nickel prices. This is one new report of ours. I suggest you read it. It's, we uploaded this on our website. So you see both technical and fundamental complementing the call. So that's why we still we saw uh, we're still seeing it has legs to rally. So that's one new report of powers. So FGen, of course, we recommended that as early also before rallying to around 26, 27 right now. This is also one new report of ours. We recommended AC Energy as early as June. It broke out just earlier. So something for you to read about to prepare yourselves if you really want to pick up AC Energy Philippines. So this is really a growth stock. Um, it broke out earlier, so we have a growth stock with good price performance. So there. So this is the performance of our traders playbook um, for the first half of the year. Compared to PSA performance as of end June, 20.6%, the performance of the playbook should you buy all the stocks, both the the profit ones and the net and the, the ones that are cut loss, you will have still earned six point four percent. Of course, that's gross. That's gross. No, no taxes there yet. So there. Uh, thank you to everyone. Please listen in to our Spotify podcast uploaded every Tuesday. We have thirteen episodes. So thank you. As we conclude the first month of the first half of the year, we are hoping for a better road ahead. This here is Roy Seguilar, uh, Equity Research Department. And as always, 
your future first. Thank you and have a good long weekend ahead.